Today I'm going to do a tutorial about um, painting a leaf in this beautiful Painterly Days book by Christy Rice. And because it is autumn, I would love to make a leaf in autumn colors. I have recently done uh, some painting in this gorgeous book and I'll show you what I've been doing and then we'll start the tutorial. Let's see. This is one of the first testing pages that I did. And then a couple of weeks ago I started this one. A lot more needs to be done, but um, I can only tell you it was such a joy to start painting this one. I uh, only recently received this book, so most pages are still uh, not painted. Here is the one with the uh, autumn leaves. And then there are a lot of blank pages again. So, and here is one I've been working on recently. And um, I really enjoy this one too. I do this uh, at night time, just sitting on the couch with this on my lap. Wonderful. Let's see where the others are. Here's another one with these beautiful deer. So as you can see, I'm not uh, not uh, someone who wants to uh, start a page and finish it and not start another page before the first one is finished. I just do whatever I like. This is a page where I tested watercolor uh, pencils and uh, ink tent pencils by Derwent. And, but I have to say, I still prefer ordinary paint with a brush. This one is going to be fun as well, I think. So let's find a leaf that we can make, we can turn into one great autumn leaf. Let's do this one here on the left. I'm still figuring out what the best camera position is to record everything properly because I also want, to, I not only want to show you what I'm doing on the paper but also how I'm picking up the paint and how I am cleaning my brushes. So, but that's a work in progress. In the end, I will find uh, my way with it. So I have a uh, jar of water. And if you want to do it perfectly, then you need two jars of water, but um, not today for me. And here is my palette and the brushes that I use most of the time. I have more brushes, but uh, and here are some tissues. I already use them, but you can uh, I can use them uh, a long time, so I will. And um, there are several ways of starting painting these leaves, and I will show you the wet in wet technique today. So I will start to wetten the leaf first and then add color to it. So let's pick that jar. And I'm wetting my brush. Now I have a brush that isn't straight as you can see and you can use any brush you like there are also 
round brushes. They are very popular. And there are completely flat ones, but I prefer this one. So, it is wet already, and I'm just going to, to add this moisture to the page. Not too much, because um, I don't want to the paper to buckle too much and if you have great quality watercolor paper then you can add a lot of water but in this coloring book the paper is not that thick so don't overdo it so i'll pick up a little bit more water so i dampen it now Dampened it. Is that English? I hope so. Anyway, and now I'm going to pick up some color and I will use a smaller brush. The one I just used is a number 12. And now I'm going for the same type of brush but then a number 8. And I am going to start with a very bright yellow and if you want to know which color that is, that is this one. I'm using Cotman by Winsor & Newton, Lemon Yellow U. I'm wetting my brush and now I'm just, as you can see this blob of white paint is not completely clean. But I have noticed that it really doesn't matter that much. Now, as you can see, <laughs> I was a bit too slow because there is not enough water left. It dried too fast, so I'm adding water. Let's try this again. I am not a professional watercolorist. I'm just somebody who is exploring it, so you will see me make dozens of mistakes. Look, this is what I want to show you, it's just, I hope you can see the difference. I just want this, I'm not covering everything, just here and there. A little bit. And now I'm going for a little bit of green. And I'm going for this one, Sap Green. And that is over here on my palette. It looks quite dark, but actually that is not so, it's not so dark. And the more water you use for diluting the color, the lighter the color becomes. So let's see what happens if I look at that. Let's do that again. There's green paint. Look at that. Now this is a bit dry so I pick up a little bit of water and then I just let the color float. Just go wherever it wants. And that is so nice about um, watercolor paint, I think, that it has a will of its own. And um, that turns your painting experience into quite, it can be quite adventurous. So I'm just putting in color here and there. So, now I'm going to wetting again. Well, actually, I'm going to clean my brush again. And then I will dry it a little bit. So, now let's add 
some warmer tones. How about this one? Elizarin Crimson Dew. That is one gorgeous dark red. I'll be picking it up from my palette. I'll show you. It's over here. Look at that. So, let's see what happens if I put this in. That looks pretty strong. It is pretty strong, yes. Do you see that? It just starts to move. And it will move until there the the paper has dried once the paper isn't moist anymore this process of paint spreading will stop and then you will have to add a little bit more water and then the process will start again Here you can see the paper has dried already, so I will add a little bit of water to my brush and ignite, revive the paint. Now you can see that this uh, paint is also mixing with the colors that are already there so the green over here is mixing with this red and it becomes more brown so you can mix on the paper you don't have to you can also mix it before you put it on the paper but um, it's uh, fun to see how uh, mixing works so. another color that I really like for autumn leaves is this one burnt sienna now you can't you really can't go wrong with choosing colors just uh, do whatever you want this is the burnt sienna so I'm picking up some. I first wetted my uh, brush and then, then it's much easier to pick up some paint. Let's see what happens if we put it in. It's a warm brownish orange tone. And again I won't put it everywhere but just here and there. To see what the effect is. Now you can see the paper is still moist, so I can just. This, these are very gentle brush strokes. And then I'm leaving behind just a touch of color I will now go for a slightly darker color burnt umber it is a pretty dark brown and it is this one Now, and I'm going to use this color first to add it here to the twig, just a touch, and then I will add it here and there on the veins, 
with just a touch because it can be strong and this is exactly why I love this brush because you can use it with the point look it has a very sharp point so I can be very precise but I can also make lines like this you know summer is really over here in the Netherlands autumn is coming until uh, yesterday we had gorgeous weather but now it is uh, windy and a bit rainy and the temperature has dropped so we are heading for autumn so I'm putting some dark here because that will help to, to get the other leaf to pop out on the forefront so I'm now wetting my brush it is wet right now and I'm now taking off the excess amount of water and then I will blend the color and that is so nice of coloring books like uh, Painterly Days and there are more for watercolor that you can practice 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 and Christy Rice author of this Painterly Days series did something very smart because every design is in the book twice that is very smart so first you can practice on a page and as soon as you feel confident and know what you want to do then you go to the other side and actually start painting and that is so nice I will add a little bit of water here and there just to see what happens if we so so let's set I am now going to add a little bit more yellow and again I will use this one lemon yellow you so I wetted my brush and I will pick up the paint. You know, this lemon yellow hue is very bright. If you find it too bright, then you pick a, a darker one. It's all okay. With an autumn leaf like this, you really cannot go wrong. Autumn leaves have so many different colors and shades and they are never perfect so they always have something that uh, well unexpected unexpected color combinations little flaws I have to dry now so I'll pick up a little bit of paint here and there so so this is a technique to pick up excessive paint if there's too much paint or water you just dry your brush and then you can pick up paint you want to get rid of and that can give you brilliant 
um, effects. Now, if you do not have Cotman's paint, and you have another brand, just pick a yellow, a red, a green, a brown, and then go with the flow and just enjoy the process. So, how about, I, I think I want to add a slight touch of green here and there. I don't know if that is so wise, but I feel I want to do that. Just a light touch of that sap green that we had earlier, is this one. And it's not because I want the leaf to be green, but it has something to do with balance in the leaf. I feel here it's a little bit of green. I need to work that out further, but just a touch, and just a touch. Oh, that's not a touch, that's a blob. So I'm now drying my paint or my brush and just, yeah, now it's a touch. Picking up a little bit more paint, try again. Yeah, it's going better. Just a touch of green here and there. Although the green is leaving the leaf, I, I feel I just want to add a little bit of green to it. So now I have to uh, pick up the excessive paint here. So I think I like it like this. And maybe I should uh, leave it this way. For so it can dry and then uh, next time we can uh, add another layer of color. So I hope you enjoy this um, one. If you have any questions, well, put a message on Facebook or with this video or ever anywhere. and. Uh, in the end, I will answer them. <laughs> so uh, it depends on uh, how many uh, people are responding. But um, I hope you will join me next time. And uh, oh, happy uh, painting. Bye bye.